The 2023 election is a decisive pull for the future of Nigeria. Interestingly, and unlike the usual two-horse race that we have witnessed in recent elections, there are about four formidable candidates that boost up block vote from certain areas of the country. Perhaps, with the way things are shaping up, the 2023 presidential election may be the most competitive multi-party polls since 1979 the year that Nigeria held its first presidential election. Over time, the country has transformed into a two-party system. On paper, however, Nigeria remains a vibrant multi-party democracy. But outside of two dominant parties, all the other registered political parties combined highly scored up to a tenth of the valid vote cast. The competition in 1979 was more intense than what we have seen in recent times. In this video, we will take a projection into the 2023 presidential election with lessons from history. We will explain the history and evolution of political parties and the influence of religion in the Nigerian elections. We will, however, not project any winner because that is not our focus on this video. Welcome to Hispul Media In-Depth History. With at least four political parties boosting of potentially significant block votes ahead of the 2023 presidential election, Nigeria's version of ineffective democracy appears to be facing a major challenge. Elections in Nigeria as democratic principle can be traced back to the colonial period in 1922. In 1922, there was the introduction of Lagos and Calabar legislative councils whose members were nominated by the colonial authorities and the unofficial Africans were the permanent minority. Yet, the 1922 representative elective principle was also restrictive because it was not based on universal adult suffrage. Only adult males with a gross national income of not less than £100,000 were allowed to vote. The introduction of an elective principle in 1922, though restrictive, helped in the formation of political parties. For example, the first political party, the Nigerian National Democratic Party UNDP, was formed prior to the first election of 1923. Although between 1923 and 1933, the party monopolized vote within the Lagos area, but could not influence the activities of voters outside Lagos as a result of its autocratic practices and personal jealousies and queries over the spoils of office. In 1933, the Lagos Youth Movement, which later became the Nigerian Youth Movement, was formed. This party was hostile to colonial authorities. Between 1938 and 1941, it won all the elections for the Lagos Legislative Council until it was wrecked by the Ikoli Akinsanya crisis. Following the introduction of the Arthur Richards Constitution, which established a central legislative council for the entire country, another election took place in 1947 for area councils containing 24 members. However, of the 24 members, only four were elected, three in Lagos and one in Calabar. The rest were either nominated or appointed by the colonial authorities or regional local authorities. During the military rule, one of the ways of seeing religious influence was in the choice of flag bearer or running mate for the election of presidency and governors. Most of the time, it was Muslim Christian or Christian Muslim. Religion became an issue in these choices. For example, in 1979, the National Party of Nigeria NPN endorsed a Muslim Christian while the Unity Party of Nigeria UPN refused to adopt this stance but instead promoted a Christian Christian ticket. However, it was the popular opinion that that must have been the reason why they lost. In 1983, the three major political parties of the 1979 elections resurfaced. However, the elections of 1983 were characterized by massive vote rigging and other electoral fraud. Despite the massive rigging, the dominant parties still voted according to ethnic and religious loyalties. The NPN won in the north, the NPP in the south and Igbo-dominated areas, and the UPN in the Yoruba-dominated areas. 
Our focus, though, would be on the 1979 election in relation to 2023. The 1979 presidential election serves as a basis for which a really competitive multi-party presidential election looks like. In the election conducted on the 11th of August 1979, the parties pulled the following number of votes. The National Party of Nigeria NPN pulled 5.69 million votes. The Unity Party of Nigeria UPN had 4.92 million votes. The Nigerian People's Party NPP had 2.82 million votes. The People's Redemption Party PRP had 1.73 million votes and the Great Nigerian People's Party GNPP had 1.69 million votes. That means out of the total of 16.85 million votes cast, the NPN won 33.77%, the UPN 29.18%, the NPP 16.75%, the PRP 10.28% and the GNPP 10.01%. Also, each of the political parties won the presidential election in at least one of the 19 states at the time. The NPN led in 9 states, the UPN in 5 states, the NPP in 3 states, PRP and GNPP in 1 state apiece. It should be noted also that some of these states have now been broken into two or more. A state-level disaggregation of the performance of the parties shows how intense the competition was and gave some intimation about what actually made the difference for NPN, the winning party. For instance, the NPN won well not just in Old Bauchi, Benue, Kwara, Niger, Sokoto states, but also in Old Cross River and River states but marginally in Kaduna state 43% and Gongola state 35.52%. The party also had a good showing in Bender 36.2%, Plateau state 34.72% and Bronu 34.71%. The UPN won comprehensively in Old Ondo where it scored a whopping 94.50% the highest percentage by any political party in that election. Ogun, Oyo, and Lagos state, but marginally in Bendel, present-day Ido and Delta state, where it scored 53.2%, but also had good showing in Kwara, 37.48%, and Gongola, 21.67%. The NPP won all Old Anambra and Imo state convincingly, but marginally in Old Plateau state, where it got 49.70%. The PRP won in Kano by 76.41% and scored 31% in Kaduna, though it produced the governor of the states. And lastly, GNPP won marginally with 54.04% in Bronu State, the home of its flag bearer, but recorded 34.09% in Gongola and snap up 26.61% in Sokoto, the home state of the NPN flag bearer. The most interesting and most competitive state was Gongola, present Adamawa and Taraba state. There, NPN led narrowly with 35.52%, followed closely by GNPP with 34.09%. Then, UPN with 21.67%. In the governorship election, NPN dropped to seven states. UPN and NPP retained their five and three states respectively, while PROP and GNPP each gained an additional one state to put their tally at two apiece. The strong showing by the five parties was not surprising, as the political parties were formed and led by prominent and respected political leaders. Dr. Namdi Azikiwe controlled the NPP, Chief Obafemi Awolowo of UPN, Malam Aminu Kanu controlled PRP, and Alhaji Waziri Ibrahim controlled GNPP, while Alhaji Shehu Shagari controlled the NPN. Three of them were from the north and the remaining two from the south. While the 2023 contenders may not necessarily have the statue of the political heavyweights of the Second Republic, there are four candidates on the scene now that can ignite the kind of keen competition witnessed in 1979. The candidates are Alhaji Atiku Abubakar of the PDP, 
Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu of APC, Senator Rabio Musa Kwankoso of the New Nigerian People's Party, NNPP, and Mr. Peter Obi of the Labour Party. Two APs are from the North and the South. The last two are in position to give the first two a good run for their money. Kwankoso has a long established fan base in Kano and environs and his Kwankwasia movement that stretches beyond his northwest zone. Obi is enjoying tremendous support among young voters and those desirous of obtaining the status quo and is seen as a viable hope for the Southeast to win the presidency. For the first time in the Fourth Republic, there is a real chance of moving beyond the traditional two-horse race which has the potential of expanding options for the electorate and deepening Nigeria's democracy. The election may even go into a runoff which one of the parties unsuccessfully aimed for in 1979. It is however difficult to project exactly how things would go in 2023. But one thing is clear, the eventual winner will be the candidate that can hold down his domain and garner significant support outside of his base. That is the ultimate lesson from 1979. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and boop the like button on this video. Thank you. Watch this video here in this for in-depth history of the Abacha days and his democratic transition agenda. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.